You finally did it. You bought your first mail order own root rose. Up to now, you've probably bought them from the local garden center, already potted up big old things with cranes and backhoes to plant them with and things like that, big two by two foot hole. And you said, well, I want to try a different rose. I want to try an own root rose and I'm hearing so many good things about, all of which are true, by the way. So you went to the website, you picked a rose, you said they sell them in bands and liners. Well, what's a band and a liner? Well, it's a little bit smaller, but okay, let me give it a try. I've been hearing all these great things about it. You picked your ship date, the date arrives, you dig your hole. Oh, it's rose planting day. Does it get any better than this? And you pack, unpack your first own root liner rose and you think to yourself, is that it? I'm going to kill it. The first choice you have when your own root rose arrive after being shipped to you in the mail is to plant it in a pot, grow it on for a little bit, and then put it in the ground. That's what we're going to talk about here. Basically what I'm going to use is a bigger pot. In this case it's a one gallon pot. You could also use a two gallon pot. I wouldn't go to a three gallon pot. That's probably a little bit too much. A one or a two is plenty big enough. We want to try to basically get those roots growing. And a one gallon pot, particularly a black one, is nice because you put that in the sun and it warms the soil from all over and those roots actually grow faster that way. Okay? The other thing is just a good potting soil, a good basic potting soil. You can mix a little compost into it. I mix a little bit of organic granular fertilizer in there, just a little bit. And it's an organic fertilizer because that's time release. I'm conditioning the soil as well. That's what I mix into that as well. Now, I'm going to bring you in closer and show you how to transplant this and give you a couple little tips as well. Uh, when I first unpack it, there might be a few yellow leaves from being shipped in packaging. That's no big deal. I'm not going to worry about that. I might even see some leaf drop on the plant when I first plant it. Uh, you might see a little bit of wilting when you first plant it. It's been shipped, it's been in transit, it's been through a stressful time. Don't worry about it. Water it, take good care of it, it'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and put some of the potting soil on the bottom of the soil. This is no different than planting any other plant. Roses are plants too, after all. And then what I'm going to do is, however, I am going to plant it a little bit deeper than it is in the container. And here is why. You can see this rose here. See how it wiggles back and forth a little bit? That just comes from planting when we first do the transplants from those tiny little rooted cuttings into these, into these liner pots, okay? By planting it a little bit deeper, I can use the soil to brace those canes. I'm going to go about half an inch deeper than it is in the pot that it came in. And what begins to happen, as you can see, is that begins to stabilize the rose. And I would do the same thing if I plant it outside as well, by the way. All right, can you see that now, how I've got that in there a little bit deeper, about half an inch to an inch deeper is where it is. And that has begun to stabilize those canes, which is what I'm really after. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do after this is I'm going to put it outside in sunlight, probably where it gets morning sun. I'm not necessarily looking for a spot that gets full afternoon sun. That might be a little much. But as long as it gets six, seven hours of morning sun, it'll be fine. I brought you in real close here to talk about planting them in a hole directly into the ground with this own root rose. This is the same little white pet that I showed you in the other demonstration. Again, we take the tag aside. I've dug a hole. I dig a hole about as big as uh, like a two gallon container, maybe about 10 inches across, 12 inches deep. If you live in heavy clay, like where I live here in South Carolina, all right, to get a two foot by two foot hole involves small explosives. And you know what? Homeland Security really frowns on that kind of thing. I dig a hole about as big as the pot itself, maybe a little bit bigger. If I'm planting this in the ground, for example, I'm going to dig a hole about this big around and about that deep. There's a new pervading theory that's going on. A lot of that new soil, that living soil around it, has got all the endo and ecto mycorrhizae in it. That's why I don't feel you want to disturb that, all of that life that's taken so long to create, and take it out and sterilize it, replacing new, new soil. Dig a hole big enough to get it in and big enough to add some amendment like I did when I showed you how to plant the rose directly in the ground in this little band, okay? Don't worry about the two foot by two foot hole when you're planting really? these kind of roses. I'm going to take some of this amendment, in this case composted horse manure, and I'm just going to mix it with the native soil at about 50-50. This is what I've already dug out of the ground. This is my native soil here. Now it's been mended a little bit over the years before we ever planted here, but that's basically what it is. I'm going to go ahead and backfill this hole a little bit, make a little spot to hold the bottom of the plant, I'm going to slip it out of the pot. Now, just like I did, and this is where you have to just kind of play with it, just like I did in the rows in the pot, I'm going to plant it deeper, okay, because I want to prevent that wind rock, about an inch deeper than it was in that pot. I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit more amendment, mix that up, and I'm just putting it right in the ground. Pick it up a little bit. Can you see already when I pile that soil up around it how the rows now becomes more stable? and more self-supporting. 
That'll also prevent the top sun from getting to that root ball that exists and drying out so quickly. Okay, that's in the ground. That's already a little bit more stable. The last thing I'm going to do is take some hardwood mulch, and I'm going to mulch around this very, very heavily. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure this soil doesn't dry out. That basically covers the two methods of what to do when the rose first arrived. You can put it in a pot or put it in the ground. Now, what's the best way to do it? It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. There isn't all in the ground or all in the pots. It has to do with a couple of things. First of all, your comfort level and your skill level as a rose grower. If you've been growing roses a long time, you're probably more comfortable putting them in the ground. If you're getting kind of new to this and kind of want, ah, let me just take a few extra steps here to make sure this works out this first time, go ahead and use the pot. Well, here's what I'm going to really tell you to do. Trust your garden's instinct. Look at the plant when you unpack it. If it's a smaller plant and you think, ooh, that might need a little bit of help, the pot is your solution. If it's a big plant that's booming right along and you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know what, what the heck, put it right in the ground. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Trust and use your instincts. Now that you've got all your roses planted, either in the ground or in a pot, let's talk about expectations. What can you expect from that rose during those first initial two, three, four months of growth? How big are they going to get during that first season? Well, the answer is they're going to grow very quickly, probably more than you expected. What I've got here to illustrate that is I've got three different varieties of roses and three pretty different classes. And these are all from the same crop last summer. These are the liner pots that we're currently shipping from roses we grew last summer about 10, 12 months ago or something like that. So I want to show you an example. And this is Papillon, which is a Floribunda. That's the liner. This is the exact same rose from the exact same crop last summer, but transplanted into this pot about eight to nine weeks ago or something like that. You can see the difference in the growth already in that short time. Same thing with this. This is a Little White Lies, which is a beautiful little ground cover from Sean McCann. Again, this should give you a good illustration of the difference in what to expect and what to see. And lastly, I've got Aptos, which is a great little noisette, also known as Dr. Robert Corns. And you can, again, you can see the difference between the two roses in just eight to nine weeks worth of growth. Not only the thickness and the caliper of the canes, but also they've almost quadrupled in size. So that's what you can expect to see from these roses. You can expect to see some pretty good and fairly good strong growth. Now the next thing you're going to want to know is, okay, what's going to happen now in one or two years down the road in my garden? Well, let's take a look at that now. Well, this is what you can expect from an own root rose. This is Ivor's Rose, lovely rose from the Beals family. Cherry red blooms, very healthy, very, very clean. There's about five or six bushes here, but this is one big plant right here, as you can probably see, right under here. Okay. This plant is about two and a half years in the ground. So in other words, this was planted in the ground about two to two and a half years ago. So two and a half years ago, this rose here looked like this. This is also Ivor's rose. It's the same thing. The difference is the two and a half years I in the ground. I hope that's taken some of the fear out of purchasing own root roses and bands and what to do with them. I know it can be very confusing and I know it can be intimidating. I bought my first own root roses probably 15, 20 years ago. And you know what? Sombrui, Madam Isaac Pereira, I still remember them actually. And you know what? I have both plants at my house now 15, 20 years later. And I moved them from Los Angeles, California, here to my home in South Carolina. They did just fine and they lived. And they're still beautiful plants today. And what I really hope we did is took some of the fear out of buying these kinds of roses. Because I know it's intimidating. I know that. So the main thing I want you to remember is this. When this plant arrives, it's just a plant. It's not a rose, it's a plant. Trust your instincts. If you think it needs a little extra water, give it a little extra water. Too much sun, move it some shade. Trust your own judgment. But most of all, relax. They'll be fine. And what this does is gives you, opens you up to a whole world of thousands of different kinds of roses that you cannot buy from anywhere other than the independent nurseries like ourselves. So that's what I want you to remember to do. So right now, after the roses are planted, relax. Take it easy. Let them do their thing. Let nature run its course. And you know the best thing you can do right now? Stop and smell the roses.